Okay, let's talk a little bit about income and expenses. Um, as you're going through, and let's say you, you've, you've landed that perfect tenant, they've moved in, uh, everything's going great, you start collecting rent. Um, let's talk a little bit about you know, the best practices here um, with dealing with your income expenses uh, moving forward. So how should I handle my income and expenses? Um, number one, the number one thing I like to do is, depending on where you are, uh, and again, this may you know, vary between, you know, like I said, uh, if you're in a, a neighborhood like Back Bay or if you're in a neighborhood like Dorchester, you know, again, these things kind of vary, but I like to provide my tenants with multiple ways to pay rent. And by that, I mean, uh, you know, you, somebody, there are often tenants that don't have checking accounts. Um, there are, you know, people that don't like to mail, you know, statements. I, I, so a couple different ways. You can, one, you can drop it off in my office. Um, two, you can mail it to the office. Uh, three, um, you can do an electronic payment from your bank account. Uh, four, um, and this is what uh, the majority of my tenants do, is actually I provide them with the Bank of America account. So it's Mandrel Co., you know, rental properties or whatever it may be. I provide them with our Bank of America account number they actually go into a Bank of America branch and deposit the rent amount right into the account. I love it. I get the money directly. Uh, they love it. They get a receipt. There is no you know, waiting on checks or anything like that. They can go right to the branch, any Bank of America branch, and pay their rent directly into our account. I, and again, I, I, maybe I'm, I'm jumping ahead, but I assume some of you might have a question about um, security. You're giving somebody your account number. The only thing you can do with my account number is deposit money into my account. They, they need an ID or anything to take money out. There's nothing else they can do but deposit. So I've, you know, like I've been doing that. I've been, I've been using that method or allowing that method for the last six or seven years now, uh, and I've had no problems with it whatsoever. Um, and it's been great in terms of um, you know, just being able to provide another way for them to uh, pay rent a lot easier to them. A lot of people, you know, I think most of us live or work somewhere within five minutes of a Bank of America, so it allows it to, it's a very easy way to collect rent. Um, the only thing that I do not allow is cash, um, and I'm actually getting away from money orders as well. The reason I do not allow cash is there's too much room for error, uh, and by that I mean, let's say I give you a hypothetical, my client comes, or my, excuse me, my tenant comes to the office and hands me an envelope and says, here's the rent. Uh, and I say, great, how's your summer going? You know, things are going well. We engage in a little conversation. Five minutes later, they're driving away. I go back to the office, do a couple of things of what I have to do, open up the, the envelope, and it's $300 short. I call the tenant, and the tenant says, well, I gave you all the money. And I'm saying, well, I literally just opened up the envelope, and it's $300 short. Who's right and who's wrong? There's no way to tell. They're going to say that I peeled off 300 bucks and is try trying to get more money from them. I'm going to say that they're ripping me off. You can't do that with a check. You can't do that with anything with a paper trail. You can't do that when you're depositing rent directly into my account. Um, the, 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 the bank teller is going to give you a receipt about how much cash. If, you don't, if your receipt is wrong, you have an argument with the bank teller or not with me. I only care about what went into my account. So it's a lot cleaner. I would never, um, you know, I took cash one time. Uh, it was very similar, very similar example to that where she slipped into the door. Um, I was out $700 because at the end of the day, that argument can't be won. You know, like I said, at the end of the day, I decided to eat the 700 bucks that the, it was short. Um, I don't know what happened. I don't know whether, you know, it was something that, you know, she decided to keep. There was issues, but that's beside the point. To protect you, I would say no cash. Provide as many other opp opportunities to pay the rent as possible. Uh, but I would not accept cash. Just keep things clean. You really want a paper trail. Uh, funnel rental into uh, a separate operating account. We talked about that. Um, to keep things clean, um, and as your portfolio of rentals grows, uh, if, if this is if you're buying one and you live in it, maybe it doesn't make you know a lot of sense for you. But if you're planning on growing your portfolio, I would encourage you now to get a separate operating account. Start putting your rental in that 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 rental income in your account. You buy rock salt. You buy shovels. You buy you know a new sink or a new faucet. Take the money from that and pay it. Pay the mortgage with that. It just keeps a lot of thing, things a lot cleaner at the end of the year. Keeps you a lot more organized, and it keeps you available to, um, you know, go out and purchase other rentals. It's gonna, it's gonna basically you start your business as if you're running a business, and it will, it will grow from there. Um, pay your expenses with a separate debit or tra charge card. Same exact reason, just from organizational standpoint. Uh, save all your receipts, file cabinet, scan. Uh, the property in the folder, and we talked about that at the top of the, the presentation. Uh, just being as organized as possible, treat it like a business, and you know it will grow. Uh, and the last thing we'll talk about really quickly is 
the difference between capital and operating expenses. Um, this is something as a landlord you should be aware of. Uh, a capital expense, uh, let me, hopefully I can articulate this as, uh, in, in a good way. Uh, a capital expense is something that is depreciated over a given amount of years. I think it's five to seven depending on the capital expense. An operating expense is written off in that current year. So a, an example of a capital expense would be a hot water tank. Your tenant's hot water tank breaks and you need to replace it. You're going to pay $500 for the hot water tank and another $500 to $700 to your plumber for installation. You're out $1,200. Unfortunately, that $1,200 is not a write-off in 2016. When you do your taxes, that capital expense is going to be written off over five or six years, $200 a year or whatever it may be. An operating expense, your hot water tank starts leaking. The same hot water tank is leaking and the plumber comes, or that's, that's a bad example, hot water tanks when they leak they actually are breaking, or broken. A pipe starts leaking and your plumber comes over and uh, quickly you know, puts a new fitting on the pipe and repairs that pipe. The pipe is still in existing, it's, not, it's an operating expense, it's a repair. Um, so that is written off in the current year. The reason this is important, the reason why you want to know this is some landlords, depending on your strategy, and what you're trying to do, if you're trying to maximize your write-offs for that year, you want to make everything as, as, as much as possible a repair or a fix versus a capital a replacement or a capital expense. I hope that makes sense. If I replace something and it has a useful life of several years, it's a capital expense that's going to be written off and I'm only going to get a portion of that write-off. If it's an operating expense, I'm going to be able to write off or a, 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 a something that's needed right now. Um, and it does not have a useful life over multiple years, I'm going to be able to write it off and maximize my expenses in the current year. Um, so, and again, that's something you should realize depending on your strategy, um, you know, then that you want to consider. So I'll give you a perfect example. You buy a refrigerator for, uh, you know, a unit, the refrigerator broke, um, that, the cost of that refrigerator is going to be written off over multiple years. The same refrigerator needs to be replaced, the cost of that, re uh, excuse me, uh, a part needs to be replaced the cost of that part and labor is going to be written off in that same that same year. That is an operating expense versus a capital expense. If you have further questions about that, please let me know. But I'm also going to give you uh, a great resource uh, for uh, taxes uh, and questions like that as well. Sorry, excuse me. Um, handling your taxes. Uh, a couple of things. This is the, the resource I was uh, referring to. Uh, I've been using this landlord tax deduction guide. I've you know I've had. Uh, this book in front of me or somewhere in my office for um, you know uh, seven eight years now you know, I've been in the business for ten I, I bought this very early on it's been extremely helpful it's not something you necessarily need to read cover from cover but you really wanted to to, to get a grasp on and again I think what most people don't understand um, is or I think they need to change their mindset when you become a landlord you are a business owner that that's that's and I think that's where most people you know what they most people fail to realize is that you want to treat this as much like a business as possible so you want to educate yourself you have write-offs you have income and expenses and there's a lot of things that you can do to benefit your personal life by this and we can talk a little bit about that as well um, but let's let's go through it let's say um, that the first thing you want to do is obviously save your receipts your invoices and file everything um, one of your biggest tax deductions um, as a landlord, as, as a rental property owner, is going to be the mortgage that you pay, or the, excuse me, the interest on the mortgage that you pay. So a portion of your mortgage every month is, and if you escrow, it's principal, um, so you're paying down the principal balance of a loan that you borrowed. It's interest, going back to the bank for the, the, their earnings for uh, allowing you to borrow that money. It's taxes and insurance. The biggest expense that you'll have often, you know, it could be $25,000, you know, for the year. Um, you know, in your first couple of years, is that interest expense on the on the mortgage, and that's fully tax deductible. So any rental income that you have is going to be the taxes on that is going to be reduced uh, dollar for dollar by the interest that you're paying. Um, any water bills, any sewer. So you're going to get it, assuming you're in the city of Boston, you're going to get a uh, city of Boston city uh, sewer water and sewer bill every. A month, uh, and that's also a tax write-off to you as well. Unless you live in the property, if you live in the property, then let's say it's a three-family, then two-thirds of that bill is a write-off to you. You do not get that deduction. The mortgage interest deduction you get wholly uh, in its entirety. The water uh, you get whatever units you're not living in. Um, common area utilities. 
if I own a rental and the, the lights in an idea in a perfect world you should have let's say it's a triple decker four electrical meters uh, on the side of your building or in your basement on the side of your building wherever they are there should be one for each unit and a common area um, if you do not have that you need to talk to your electrician uh, it's not something that's um, uh, I would rush out and get immediately but um, from a legal standpoint um, if you say or I'll give you two examples if you live there if you live in the property you live on the first floor and you're paying for the common area that's fine there's nothing wrong with that you move out of that triple decker and all three units are rented one of your tenants technically is paying for the common area electrical uh, common area electrical so the hallways the basement uh, the back stairs exterior lights that um, could get you into some trouble if it pops up and they notice that they are paying for that you could you know like I said have a little bit you might have to you know provide them with a little bit of cash reduce their rent or just keep them quiet for a little while until you can actually get that that fourth common meter on there um, once that's done those common area utilities are deductible fully deductible that's an expense to you your home office deduction you're in you're a landlord now you're you're running a rental property business even if you have a little desk set up in a dining room or wherever it is there's a certain portion of your home expenses that you're now going to be able to deduct because you have that home office deduction. I, that perfect world, you have a, a separate bedroom, a small office in your home. Let's say it's 20% of your home, 20% of, I believe, your expenses for your home. Again, I'm not a CPA. Talk to your CPA about this. Um, but you do have a home office deduction. Uh, travel expenses. Um, as a landlord, again, this is, the, this is the plus side. You are running a business. Um, talk to your, again, I'm going to, disclosure, I'm not a CPA. But I'm going to tell you what I do. <laughs> um, let's say my wife and I want to go to. Um, uh, I'll give you a, actually a little less of a you know uh, an easier example. Um, you want to go to an ex a travel seminar or excuse me a, a, a real estate seminar that's located in New Hampshire. I live in Boston. Uh, the the seminar is in New Hampshire. I decide to stay a night at the hotel in New Hampshire. Um, the cost of that 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 seminar is deductible against my rental expenses or my rental income. The cost of my travel uh, is deductible uh, against my rental expenses. Um, I can tell you from a uh, from experience, I'm interested in um, investing in the state of Florida. Um, so there's been a couple times where my wife has said, "Let's go to Miami uh, for a few days." Uh, we decide, you know, like I said, we try to choose a time where there's a seminar or a real estate seminar going on in the state of Florida or somewhere in Miami hopefully it's something that I may want to attend to learn about learn for more about Florida uh, ex, uh, rental markets and the, and the the you know the cost of you know uh, investments down there so now um, I'm now writing off a portion of those travel expenses uh, it's a business um, I'm looking to grow my portfolio in the state of Florida I'm also simultaneously bringing my wife who's gonna spend most of her time on the beach um, but our hotel my plane ticket, the the seminar, all of that is a write-off for us, um, and it's something that you could, like I said, incorporate in your business, and, and definitely something you should think about. Uh, depreciation and capital costs. Uh, so again, depreciation. You you bought your building for three hundred thousand. Over the years, I think and I believe I'm not in the CPA, but I believe it's twenty seven and a half years. Your building, the, the the cost of your building is going to be depreciated over time. So it's an expense that you actually do not need to calculate. Your CPA will calculate it for you, um, and you're going to get a portion of your business, uh, excuse me, a portion of your rental property depreciated over time, and that's a, that's probably going to be your big, your second largest expense uh, or write off after the uh, mortgage interest deduction. Again, great resources. Every landlord's uh, tax deduction guide. It will. Uh, I hopefully uh, you gathered pretty much what I'm trying to say, but it'll articulate that a lot better within within the book. Um, one thing that I would, uh, I, I'm passionate about, I, I, I trust me on this one, if you are a landlord and you, um, you know, are serious about this business or you're serious about saving yourself some money, hire a real professional to do your taxes, hire a CPA, hire someone, I, ideally a CPA who understands the real estate business, in a perfect world, a CPA that actually is a landlord or a rental property owner themselves, do not go to H&R Block. I, I apologize if I'm offending anybody on this webinar who is a H&R Block tax preparer during, and I actually spelled block wrong for those of you that have noticed, H&R Block is a, is a tax preparer during you know the tax season. Um, that's great, but I, I did the taxes for a little while and I understand that it doesn't take much to 
go into H&R Block during the season, you know, learn how to use their systems and become a tax preparer. You really want, in a, in a, again, in a perfect world, a CPA that's going to get all of your money back for you, um, maximize your deductions, and then also someone who's forward-looking. When you go into H&R Block, they're saying, what have you done over the last 12 months? They're going to record it, and here's your results. What you want is a CPA that's going to advise you and say, you did this year, this, this year with your taxes and your income and your expenses. I would advise you to do this a little differently going forward. Um, great savings, great way to maximize your you know, deductions, and talk to you a little bit about your goals, um, your financial and, you know, and, and rental property goals, and you know, uh, someone you can learn a little bit from, someone who's not just going to record your past, but also talk to you a little bit about the future. So please, 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 if you own a property, um, do not, if you've been doing H&R Block and you have one, if you got a, one job and you got one W-2 at the end, that's great. You are now a business owner. You need to go and, and hire, pay a little bit more, um, and often or not that much more, uh, hire a professional that's going to look out for your best interests, and that does this year-round.